Let's talk about age-appropriate dentistry. What may be appropriate for a 20-year-old may not be appropriate for a 70, 80, or 90-year-old. But we also need to keep in mind that with but we also need to keep in mind that today's 70 year old is 20 years ago a 50 year old. Health is better, people are living longer, keeping their teeth longer, and that certainly needs to be taken into consideration. But age is not a major, major consideration if the patient is mentally aware and the patient is physically healthy and can make a decision as to what they would like to have done in their own mouth. Our job on the older patient is to plan treatment that is simpler, less invasive, can be completed in less time, and typically is less expensive. Because our older patients often did not have significant retirement funds and must conserve their money, and therefore, we typically need to plan treatment that is less expensive. Quote, if you always do what you've always done, you'll always be what you've always been. This is by Henry Ford. We need to think critically. We need to look and see exactly what we're dealing with. And you, as an older patient, need to be able to ask questions of your dentist and determine what you would like to have done as your treatment plan. Remember, dentists present treatment options. You, as the patient, accept the treatment plan. And we see that quote right here. Why is this man not smiling? Well, if we look at him, we see we've got a real mess. Now, remember, he's 69 years old. He's got a severe malocclusion. He's got gum recession, and he has dark staining up there. Let's say the patient, we're going to have all that is necessary to correct this. For the gum surgery, he would be talking about around $2,500 to $3,000. He'd be talking about orthodontic treatment which probably would take anywhere from two uh, to three years to have done, and that would be five to six thousand dollars. Plus, he would need at least six veneers or crowns done on those maxillary anterior teeth or upper anterior teeth, and that would be somewhere uh, between a thousand twelve hundred dollars. So he would be looking at a fee in excess of fifteen thousand dollars and three years of treatment. Certainly, if I were 20, 25 years old, yes, I would think in terms of doing that. But are you going to take three years out of the life of a 69-year-old man, put him through all that treatment? Is there something simpler that we can do? This is the way he looked, and after doing a very simple procedure, which are bonded veneers, which cost about $300 each, we can give him the look that he wants for about $1,800. And as we said, if we did porcelain veneers without the orthodontics, it'd be $7,200. But let's see what he looks like after we've had that done. Notice how pleasant he is in smiling and how, how happy he is with this being done. And to do those bonded restorations would probably take only two or three hours. There would be no anesthesia necessary. And he got to a point where he likes with a relatively simple procedure. What is the beauty of bonded veneers? First of all, as I pointed out, they're less expensive. Number two, they're easier to do. Number three, they require less chair time and they are easy to repair. If a piece chips off, you can just add bonding material. But if you've done a crown and something chips off, you've got to redo the crown, another thousand dollars. Or you do another porcelain veneer at a thousand dollars. And unfortunately, when you have a new veneer or a new crown done, the color may not match as well as it would in repairing a bonded veneer. Periodontal plastic surgery for treating recession as an alternative to the gum line filling. This is periodontal plastic surgery. This was the term that I introduced to the literature, the technique on this in the 1980s. Surgery to correct anatomical, developmental, or traumatic deformities of the gingiva or alveolar mucosa. Now, the simplest root coverage procedure uh, is a coronal position flap, or the CPF. And there's a video lecture on this, number eight, which lasts about 15 minutes, which is an instructional video that a restorative dentist or a general dentist could look at and learn how to do this technique. Here we see 
uh, the reddened area where this filling on the gum we see right here is irritating to the gum. We see also areas of recession which previously have had class five or gum line fillings placed and typically they only last three to five years. And when we go in there on the left, you can see where we're removing the restoration. And on the right, we can see the abundance of gingiva. We see a nice root structure. And by doing the coronal position flap, we can bring that tissue down and have it look like that. So certainly this is a procedure that any 20 year old would wanna have. And depending on your funds and interest, this could be done on a 70 or 80 year old person. It is not the wrong thing to do to place fillings up there, but this is an alternative treatment, which I think is a much better alternative and a procedure that every general dentist should be able to do after watching the aforementioned video. Toothbrush abrasion. Here we see along the gum line, toothbrush abrasion. And this case was treated by a young lady who graduated from dental school uh, in June and this case was done by her uh, in October. She had only been out of dental school about four or five months. And by doing the procedure we talked about earlier, the coronal position flap could be brought to place. So here we see the preoperative view and after a very simple procedure, how the gum line can be brought down. Now let's look on the left, the missing tooth structure, the, root, uh, the toothbrush abrasion, and if you're 80 years old, there's no decay there. There's absolutely nothing wrong with leaving that alone. It's never going to cause any, any pain. It's never going to cause you to lose the teeth. And doing nothing in the older patient is always an option. The second option would be to do gum line fillings there, which would last three to five years and actually would make those teeth look too long and like a, uh, and like a, a fang. Better, in my opinion, would be the coronal position flap if the funds of the patients are adequate and the patient would like to have this done. I want to emphasize at this time that dentists treat defects, but all too often they don't look at the patient attached to those defects. For if you are 90 years old and you can function well, you're satisfied with the aesthetics, certainly there's some defects present which you may or may not elect to treat. But what about root caries or dental decay? And we can see on this older patient where some class five or root fillings have been done. We can see some active decay on the lateral and the, both the centrals. And certainly an option would be to do nothing. But if you want to do something, the simplest thing to do would to be do a coronal position flap. And the first thing you want to do is going there and use some dental burrs and all perhaps some uh, scaling instruments to go ahead and remove the decay as you see we have done here. And then doing a very simple procedure to bring that down. You can see the sutures placed and how it completely covers those areas that have been prepared to sit to receive that flap. The pre-op view and the post-op view and you can see how this has been repaired and that gum line will actually attach to the root and you'll have a permanent restoration that unless you go in there and brush it away, will stay there for the rest of your life. Certainly this would be the treatment option for the 20 year old. And in my mouth at 79, the procedure that you see done here with the treat would be the treatment option that I would select. Now let's look at how placing gum line fillings can uh, complicate uh, this procedure of the coronal position flap. This filling was placed by a general dentist and you can see where the gum line or the enamel line previously was and the irritation from the filling present. When the restoration is removed, there's a concavity there and you certainly cannot bring a flap down over a concavity like that. So you need to go in there with a dental burr and flatten that area so the flap can rest against that. We see the darkened area where the root surface was re removed. This area is sunken in and appears red. Because the filling was placed in the root and root structure removed, it would be necessary to place grafting material 
uh, under this area to get the contour and look that you see on the right. This is much more expensive, probably not a procedure that would be done by the general dentist, but necessarily would be referred to the periodontist. Is there an indication for a class five or a gum line filling? Absolutely. This is a patient because of GERD and acid regurgitation, we have erosion on the root structure and exposed dentin as well as enamel. So to what you can see on the right, we have gone in here and restored the junction between the enamel and the root and the general dentist has gone in there and bonded that material to create a normal enamel surface which we can then go in and graft to that area. I don't mean to be critical of dentists doing procedures, but here's a quote that I think is accurate. When I was young, I had to force myself not to lie. Now that I'm old, I have to force myself to tell the truth. So telling the truth about what can be done, I'm not being critical of the dentist that doesn't look at things like this, but just keep in mind, all dentists are not the same and all dentists are geared to correct defects, and everything I've shown you today was a defect, but there's certain ways of treating defects based on whether you are young or whether you are old.